from Daily Trust News Center. This is the News Hour. Tonight on News Hour. Three farmers killed in Kaduna as villagers flee to Katsina for fear of bandits' attack. NUC withdraws directives ordering vice chancellors to reopen universities. National greed crashes to zero megawatt seventh time in 2022. Away from Nigeria, at least 15 dead, 24 injured in Russia school shooting. Hello and welcome to the News R and Trust Television. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for joining. And now the details. A large number of people, mostly women and children from several communities, including Baburuga, Ansoni and Sabongari, have moved into the ancient city of Katsina. The people fled their villages to escape the insecurity, leaving all their belongings behind. Abdullahi Amadi interviewed some of the displaced villagers on their arrival in Katsina city. <laughs> These displaced people arrived Katsina confused, without food and shelter, and since they have nowhere to go, they are at the mercy of the elements. What have we done to deserve this? We can't even enjoy the comfort of our homes. We don't have peace, no food, nothing. All we need is peace. The reason for the flight was the massing up of terrorists armed with dangerous weapons around their villages planning to launch attacks. The terrorists, they say, had even threatened to burn down their villages if they made any attempt to inform security operatives about their presence and whereabouts. As you see all of us here, all of us have nowhere to go. We have nothing to depend on, and I think the government needs to do more to advert this ugly situation. The terrorists were first seen gathering around 5 p.m. at Baikiawa, one of the scenes of recent attacks on other villages, prompting the villagers to inform security operatives. But the help did not arrive until 8 p.m. when the Nigeria Air Force fighter planes on other security operatives were mobilized to disperse the terrorists. However, by then, the people had started their migration to Katsina City. The terrorists have done their worst in our communities, ranging from assault, kidnapping, rustling of animals, etc. We need help. We need help from the state actors. Observers say at the wake of this heightened insecurity in Kazma State, a huge humanitarian crisis is imminent. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Crossed Television News, Katana. A police officer, Inspector Idris Musa, has been reported killed by heavily armed terrorists at Makira village on Katsina, Jibia Road. The terrorists, numbering about 30 and riding on motorcycles, ambushed the border drill joint patrol vehicle, killing the police operative and went away with his AK-47 rifle. An eyewitness told Trust TV's Abdullahi Amadi that some security operatives visited the scene of the attack some minutes after the incident, put off the fire and evacuated the corpse. The terrorists also set the personnel vehicle of the police officer ablaze blocked the road and abducted an unspecified number of passengers. Confirming the incident, the police public relations officer in Katsina State, Gabo Isa, said that the police is trailing the terrorists and promised to bring them to book. Now, at least three people have been killed by bandits who attacked some communities in Berenangwari local government area of Kaduna State. The victims were said to be farmers who were working in their farms on Saturday when the bandits attack. Although security agencies are yet to confirm the attack, the chairman of Brinimgwari Emirate Progressives Union, Ishaq Kasai, said that the bandits abducted 22 people and snatched motorcycles. And according to him, at about 7 p.m. on Saturday, September 24th, the bandits invaded 
Ayengara of the Mari community in Gazage ward, killing two locals and kidnapping 12 people. They also looted shops in the same community during the attack. A federal high court in Abuja on Monday has fixed November 11 to begin hearing in a suit by the leader of the Islamic movement in Nigeria, otherwise known as Shiite, uh, as Shiite uh, that's Ibrahim El Zazaki, seeking an order compelling the Nigerian Immigration Service to release his international passport and that of his wife. Trustee Ms. Shafiu Suleiman reports. According to counsel for El Zazaki and his wife Zinat, the duo had their passports seized by the Nigerian authorities after their aborted trip for medical attention to India while in DSS custody, which were not returned to them even after their acquittal by a court in Kaduna. The applicants have now approached the court seeking an order to compel the Nigerian Immigration Service to issue them new passports to enable them travel for medical attention. We requested for the passport from DSS and NIA because they were in, his, in their custody when Sheikh Ibrahim Zekzaki and his wife returned from aborted medical trip to India. NIA and uh, DSS officials seized their passports. Now we have written to DSS and NIA requesting them to issue, to uh, return the passport, but they replied us, all of them replied us that the passport is not with them. So the best thing for us is to get a new passport. We have processed the, uh, we have followed the procedure for issuance of new passport, but the immigration services have refused to comply, despite the fact that we have fulfilled all the criteria. Recall at previous proceedings, the trial judge Justice Obiora Egualto had earlier granted a request by the counsel to the National Intelligence Agency, NIS, to join his client and DSS as respondents in the suit. Though counsel to the respondents was not available to comment on day's proceedings, the case has been adjourned to the 11th of November for hearing. Shabir Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. John Ewa, the Bayasa born suspected kidnap kingpin who was arrested in Abuja and alleged to be responsible for high-profile kidnappings in the state has been paraded alongside three members of his gang by the Bausa State Police Command. It was reported that the suspected kidnap kingpin, also known as Lion, had been on the wanted list of the police for various alleged abductions in the state. Reports say that the police trailed Ewa to Abuja where they nabbed him on Saturday. The suspect who flaunts wealth on social media is believed to be involved in several kidnap incidents around Yenagua, the state capital. Officers of the 34 Artillery Brigade, Obinze, have arrested a suspected child trafficker, Joy Duru, from Idiato, South Local Government area of Imo State. The suspect allegedly specializes in stealing children from Imo State to sell to her accomplices in River State for a huge sum of money. Parading several suspects at the headquarters of the 34 Atlari Brigade, Obinze in Imo State, the brigade commander, Sani Suleiman, said that the suspects were arrested after several months of intelligence gathering. Recovered from the suspects were forms said to have been gotten from teenage girls who get pregnant with the aim of selling the children upon delivery. The commander explained that efforts were ongoing to trace a suspected buyer of a two-week-old baby in River State. Meanwhile, the state commander of NAPTIP, Ernest Obu, said that the suspect will be charged to court and necessary actions will be taken while efforts will be made to reunite the recovered children with their families. The use of drugs and illicit substances is playing a huge role in escalating insecurity in many parts of Nigeria. This is the consensus of stakeholders at a forum in Katsina in the past week. Abdullahi Yamadi has more. Notable speakers at the event include the fifth wazir in Katsina, Professor Sani Abubakar Luga, who dwelt extensively on the role of drugs abuse in the wake of heightened insecurity. The fifth wazir in Katsina also spoke extensively on community policing 
and the many calls by the state actors on people to defend themselves against terrorist attacks. The community has been told time without number, particularly by the Nigeria police, that security is the responsibility of everyone. We have been told to confront AK-47 carrying bandits with catapult. The Katsuna State Commandant of the NDLEA follows a different plan of thought blaming parents and the society for not doing enough to prevent the proliferation of drugs in the society. He is insisting that the only solution to insecurity and other criminalities bedeviling the country is by blocking all the supply chains of drugs into the country. The anti-drugs boss is asking people to expose drugs dealers, their hideouts and collaborators describing them as the worst enemies of Nigeria. Ask yourself, what is your role when it talks about substance abuse? As a media personality, as school owners, as school administrators, as opinion leaders, as security personnel, as a traditional ruler, what is your role? Worried by the escalating insecurity, some university lecturers are conversing support for the anti-drugs agency to effectively address the menace of drugs and substances intake, especially among many youth in Katsuna State. That the issue of growth, uh, joblessness among the teeming youth of Nigeria is aiding the insecurity in Nigeria as a whole because they say an idle mind is a devil's workshop. So many of our youth are redundant with skills without occupation. This forum was part of activities to mark the NUJ Press Week, which also coincided with the anniversary of the creation of Katsuna State in 1987. Abdullahi Ismayamadi, Trust Television News, Katsuna. Nasarawa State Command of the Nigeria Police Force has confirmed assassination attempt on the immediate past Commissioner for Environment and Natural Resources, Musa Abubakar, by yet to be identified gunmen in the state. Public Relations Officer of the Command, Ramahan Nansel, who confirmed the incident, said that it occurred on 21st of September 2022, adding that investigation is ongoing. The former Commissioner, who is the Doma South House of Assembly candidate under the platform of the New Nigeria People's Party said he was attacked by the suspected assassins while returning from Rukubi village of Doma local government area where he donated relief materials and cash to victims of flood disaster in the area. He explained that about nine gunmen opened fire on his vehicle from different directions adding that he sustained bullet injuries on his elbow and back. Trust TV gathered that three bullets were extracted from the victim at the Dalhatu Arab Special Hospital, Lafia. The federal government has withdrawn its circular, which ordered vice chancellors, pro chancellors, and governing councils to reopen federal universities. A circular on Monday afternoon, signed by the Director of Finance and Account of the National Universities Commission, Sam Onazi withdrew the order asking all pro-chancellors and chairmen of the governing councils as well as vice-chancellors of federal universities to take note. Earlier in the day, a circular addressed to all vice-chancellors, pro-chancellors and chairmen of governing councils of federal universities ordered them to reopen universities. But the countering circular said that the initial circular stands withdrawn, noting that further developments will be communicated to all relevant stakeholders. We, we have been watching for a long time how this crisis has dragged. And we felt we have a responsibility being senior members of the academia as professors so that we can lend our boys, so that government and the general public will not think that. 
We do apologize for the mix-up there. Now, some concerned senior academics at the Amadou Bello University, Zaria, want the federal government to return to the negotiations table with members of Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, in the interest of Nigerians. Speaking on a statement signed by 50 professors of the university recommending the need for dialogue to resolve the impasse, Professor Saleh Adu of Microbiology Department said that the statement represented the entire university. Professor Adu noted that ASU, as a, na as a union, has been mounting pressure on the federal government to honor its obligations since the signing of the 2009 agreement, but all to no avail. Chief, there is concern about the situation in the universities. We as major stakeholders, as I said, being professors, we should voice out our concern also and call on the government to come back and sit down with us so that this problem will be resolved once and for all and universities will be reopened so that the students and their parents and the general public will have a relief so that the system will become functional it's not about opening the university. You can open the university today, but when you open the universities, the state of the universities, what will the student learn? Will they get the best out of the university? This is our concern. Mm -hmm. We don't want the students to remain at home. But again, we don't want them to come here and they will not get the knowledge they deserve to get from the university. And they will go out without gaining anything from the university and they will become a big problem to the society and to the nation in general. That's why we feel we should call the attention of the government, being professors. Moving on now to political matters, the Independent National Electoral Commission says it has implemented eight out of the 14 activities on the timetable for the 2023 general elections. IREC National Commissioner in charge of information and voter education Professor Zokoe disclosed this at a two-day capacity building workshop for journalists on the Commission's preparations for the 2023 general elections. Okoye said that INEC remains committed to conduct free, fair and credible elections next year. The Chief Press Secretary to the INEC Chairman, Mahmoud Yakubu Rotimi Oyekami, tasked journalists on the watchdog role of the media to strengthen democracy. The team lead of the European Union support to the democratic governance in Nigeria, Rudolf Elbling, charged the media in the country to always stick to facts in their reportage to avoid heating up the polity. The Independent National Electoral Commission released the timetable and schedule of activities uh, for the 2023 general elections on the 26th day of February uh, 2022. In that timetable, we listed 14 critical items that must be accomplished before we get to the election. Out of the 14 items, we have already implemented eight. And in the next few days, we are going to implement the ninth one. And so, as far as the commission is concerned, we are comfortable with our timetable. We are comfortable with our preparations. And we are confident that we are going to organize free, fair, transparent, and inclusive elections. The Independent National Electoral Commission has, over the years, deliberately nurtured a good working relationship with the media based on mutual respect and the understanding that the sustenance and survival of democracy and the electoral process is a collective task. The Commission has introduced new innovations and there are new and other creative issues within the electoral legal framework. One, we have a new electoral act 2022. It is important for the INF Press Corps uh, to be familiar with these provisions and also to also be familiar with the changes that has occurred in terms of the electoral act. I really want to appeal to the press to stay, to stick with facts and report facts and, uh, and uh, because in this already heated political and security environment, uh, putting more heat in can be extremely dangerous and nobody wants to. Now, ahead of the commencement of the 2023 election campaign on Wednesday, the presidential candidate 
of the People's Democratic Party and former Vice President of Nigeria, Atiku Abubakar, has appointed key special advisors aimed at strengthening his presidential campaign team. The appointees are former Senate President Bukola Saraki as special envoy to the presidential candidate and Anyim Pius as special advisor. Also appointed are special advisors to the candidate, our former, former governor of Kano State, Senator Ibrahim Shekarao, former governor of Oshun State, Prince Ola Gunsoe Oyinlola, and Senator Ehigi Uzamere. Former national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Prince Uche Sekondos, was also appointed as technical advisor to the presidential candidate. The appointments are with immediate effect. Now, campaigns for the 2023 elections will begin on September 28th, according to the timetable released by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. In Makuri, Jimmy Adzande speaks to residents on their expectations from those seeking political power in the country. Almost all political parties have constituted campaign councils ahead of the commencement of campaigns. For Makuri residents, the next president of Nigeria, as well as governors and members of the National Assembly, should be people who understand the level of social crisis like unemployment has degenerated to and their plans of addressing the problems. What I expect in 2023 election is I expect a transparent government. I expect a government that will provide jobs for people like us that are unemployed. Uh, so I have to vote so that I'll be able to, to select a right leader, uh, one that we at least we do what we, the masses, expect from them. We can see there are a lot of unemployment around the, 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 the country. So if we have somebody that understands the, the problem of the country, well, I know that we will have a, a headway that will change the country to better. Leaders that can put uh, food on our table, leaders that can improve infrastructure. We expect leaders that can be mindful of people's feelings. We expect leaders that can lead us very well. Some of the residents seek more youth-friendly leaders, saying this is the only way the country can make considerable progress, as it is the case in the developed countries. Our youth are suffering. Compared to other countries in Africa, where more than them, all they do is they come together and find ways that will move country forward, not to embark on blade games. That is what we expect from them. We are expecting for them to embark and invest in education. It's very, very important. There is just no way that a country will develop beyond its level of education. There is a wave of political awareness going on in the state. Individuals and groups have undertaken to discourage voter apathy and galvanize support for their parties as well as candidates of their choices. Observers submitted that the 2023 election will be interesting to watch because of the personalities involved at different levels. Meanwhile, the National Broadcasting Commission on Monday urged broadcasters to uphold the ethics of the profession and all legal provisions guiding broadcasting as political campaigns begin September 28th. The Director General of the NBC, Balarabe Ilela, made the call at a sensitization forum on political broadcasting with the theme towards a fair and responsible broadcast coverage of the 2023 general elections, a multi-stakeholders dialogue held in Abuja. Ilela also urged broadcasters and anchors of political programs to ensure that guests abide by the broadcasting code. He explained that the objective of broadcasting was for the promotion of national unity, participatory democracy, political awareness and inculcation of spirit of tolerance of divergent views and opinions. The NBC boss enjoined broadcasters to give equal access and opportunities to all political players, registered political parties and candidates. You're watching the news are on Trust Television, coming up shortly. 
We'll take a look at challenges facing spinal cord injury patients. Details of this and more after the break. To every politician, as the campaigns gain momentum and passions begin to rise, remember the errors of your opponents do not make you a success. Do not run down your opponent and inflame passions to violence between and among your supporters. What counts is what you plan to do for the electorate and how you intend to relieve the sufferings and bring succor. Nigeria is in dire need of patriotic leaders at all levels. Leaders who will make national development their priority. Concentrate on telling the electorate what you intend to do when you get into office. Focus on making your vision clear to the electorate. Don't engage in verbal abuses, fake news or speeches. Keep dealing with issues that will bring progress. You win the hearts and minds of the people by being above board, by being civil, patriotic and showing empathy. Let's join hands to make the 2023 elections peaceful. A message from the National Orientation Agency. Welcome back. This is the News R and Trust Television. Here's a reminder of our top stories again. Three farmers killed in Kaduna as villagers flee to Katsina for fear of bandits' attack. NUC withdraws directives to vice chancellors to reopen universities. In other stories, although electricity consumers said that they have enjoyed improved supply in past days, the national grid crashed to zero megawatt on Monday, causing a nationwide outage. The national electricity grid on Monday had 3,712 megawatts generated from 21 generation companies before it dropped to zero megawatts one hour after. According to information from the System Operations, a section of the Transmission Company of Nigeria, AFAM 4, was on the grid but with zero supply as of 12 noon. Although TCN was yet to establish the cause of the crash, insider sources said that it could be as a result of maintenance of the 330 kilovolts Joss Bochi transmission line slated for Monday. Operatives of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, Zamfara State Command, have apprehended a truck loaded with suspected vandalized NITEL mast and installations from Talata Marafa local government area of the state. The State Command's public relations officer, Iko Oche, who paraded the four suspects, said that they were arrested at about 7.30 p.m. in Maru Town while on a transit to an unknown location in Kaduna State. The report. The Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps is the agency overseeing all critical national assets and infrastructure. The Corps has been notified since the 4th of August this year that all permits issued to anyone or company to evacuate any property that belongs to the defunct NITEL has been invalidated. It means anyone found with such a permit or tampers with NITEL mass installations belonging to NITEL is an imposter and should face the full wrath of the law. Four persons have been apprehended for vandalism. 
The public relations officer explained that one of the suspects, Kabira Abdul Mumini, claimed that he was an agent of one Isa Abdul Mumini, who had obtained the permit from the appropriate authorities to evacuate the items to an unknown destination in Kaduna State. Here we have two gentlemen who are suspected to have tampered with the metal installation from the town of Talata Mafara Zampara State. Abdul Mumini M, 49 years, who is said to be the agent that was in charge of the evacuation of the nitrile facilities and installations. I also have Lawali Suleiman M, 25 years, who is a driver, Suleiman Abubakar M, 38 years, a conductor, and Mohammed Mohammed M, 25 years, who is also a conductor. These four gentlemen were apprehended at Maru local government on their way from Talata Mafara to Kaduna. The driver of the truck, who was also arrested as an accomplice, claimed that he was only asked by his boss, who is the owner of the truck, to carry the goods to an unknown destination in Kaduna State after the sum of 340,000 naira has been paid to the truck's owner. The truck's plate number was said to have been removed to conceal its identity while it was on transit. As a result of this particular um, uh, 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 vandalization, it doesn't scale through. They are considered to have committed a criminal conspiracy, theft, and tampering with mass tower, contrary to section 97, 287 of the Penal Code Law. A section of section nine of the Miscellaneous Offences Act, 17 Law of the Federation, Federal Four. For that reason, gentlemen of the press, they are here today. We arrested this morning at about 7:30 hours, and their destination was Kaduna. According to the NACDC, the four suspects will be prosecuted in a competent court of jurisdiction after investigations are concluded. Now, eligible voters have been called upon to vote for candidates that will put the development of Nigeria first during the 2023 elections for democracy to thrive. Participants at a one, day, one million persons rally at the Teslim Balogun Stadium in Lagos made the call as Nigeria braces up for another general election. They also called on the voters to participate fully in the electoral process to ensure the development of the nation's nascent democracy. We are ready, the youth are ready. You, if you are here, if you have been here since morning, all the universitarian institutions in Lagos State were represented here. We have our youth leader, Dr. Ibikunle, is here. And we are ready, our youth are ready. Those people that have not collected their PVC, we are making sure they are collecting. We are just preaching love, because Lagos State is a state based on love. In the name of love, in the name of God, Get your PVC ready. We want, Lego, we want Nigeria to be like Lagos State, we are, the security is certain. We can move at any time in the midnight, we move. We can, uh, we, uh, we can go to public hospitals. We have public schools that are well furnished and we believe so. All our universities in Lagos State are not on strike. Today's convention is to showcase the structure we have been working for the past three months as a support group, a former support group for Ashiwaju Bola Metunbu. This is a great moment for us, and as you can see, Ashiwaju mandate is assured. Now, the need to ensure protection of the rights of girls and women to engage in civil society, vote and be voted in elections, serve on boards, and make their voices heard in any process that will affect them has been emphasized. To this end, the Nigeria Orientation Agency is partnering the National Action for Women Agenda to flag off a project which aims at boosting women's active participation in politics ahead of the 2023 general elections. Noel Sampson has more. Proponents of greater participation by women in politics say such engagement results in tangible gains for democracy, including greater responsiveness to citizens' needs, increased cooperation across party, and ethnic lines, and a more peaceful society. 
These and other necessitated the unveiling of NAWA project on promoting peace in Nigeria through women engagement by the National Action for Women Agenda, NAWA, in cooperation with NOE and the Ministry of Special Duties and Intergovernment Affairs. The Director General of NOE, Garba Abari, highlighted the role of women in politics and the importance of gender inclusion in politics for national growth. The purpose of today's event is essential to promote sustainable peace and justice, ensure good governance, and a peaceful coexistence among all Nigerians. It is gratifying to note that NAWA not only believes, but also commits to promoting youth and women empowerment social justice, human rights, and of course campaigns against gender-based violence in Nigeria through advocacy, public enlightenment, dialogue, vocational skills training, seminars, workshops, and conferences among others. Stakeholders at the event were brought up to speed with the idea behind NAWA and what it stands for. Whosoever that will want to come up to contest in any area, either as a president, governor, and other various political listings, women should be involved. We want the women to be involved 40%. Effective women representation in politics, stakeholders believe will increase creativity and help diversify the pool of talent, skills, and abilities. Well, Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. Retired military officers on Monday defied the early morning rain and staged a third phase of protest at the headquarters. Ministry of Defense Abuja over non-payment of their security department allowance, among others. The aggrieved protesters, joined by some relatives of deceased personnel, blocked the road to the ministry located at Sheep House on Olusha Gono Basanjo Way in the Federal Capital Territory. The military veterans under the ages of the retired members of the Nigerian Armed Forces and the Coalition of Concerned Veterans, CCV, accused the Minister of Defence, Bashir Magashi, of being insensitive to their plight. They said that they are fighting on behalf of the late military personnel and veterans who died in service, especially those who died while fighting Boko Haram terrorists. On his part, the National Secretary of RMNAF said that the demonstration was to demand the payment of their security department allowance, which has been approved by President Buhari but is yet to be disbursed by the ministry. Now, one expectation of people from democratically elected leaders is the delivery of dividends of democracy to them. This, many believe, cannot be achieved without proper checkmating of the leaders by the members of the society. To this end, the Nasarawa State Council of Nigeria Union of Journalists, NUJ, has embarked on a media tour of projects executed for the benefit of the people of the state. Abubakar Abdullahi sent in this report that is presented here. The Nigerian Union of Journalists, Nasarawa State Council, during the visit inspected several urban and rural roads constructed by the state government, among other projects that are not limited to bridges, schools, markets, event centers, and bus terminals. Journalists who are part of the tour interacted with members of different communities on the projects executed in their areas. We are very happy to see that uh, government, the uh, national state government has come to repair our road and we are very happy for that. This road has linked uh, most of uh, from uh, Uma Aisha, uh, Kenyahu, Pakete and Uja, Sofio, so ever so down to a total and the road is very rough but the city government has come to start the road and we are very happy for that. 
before in our area we don't have water but now we have bowl and we used to fetch and drink and fetch and walk and wash our clothes we used to fetch the water and use it we in this vicinity are very very happy for long we have lacked such facility uh, if you turn to my back you can see that there is an abandoned health facility close to five or six years. Uh, before you move from here, in case of any emergency, it becomes a problem and it takes time. But with the coming on board of this new hospital, I think uh, it, will, it will give us at least a relief. Like Oliver Twist, the resident appealed for more impactful project from the government. Engineer Sadiq Sani is leading one of the firms carrying out projects in the state. He gave an update of the construction of the project in the state. As you can see, the project is the project to come since uh, about three months ago. Next month, I think the point is to this particular access. He promised to deliver quality projects and sought resident support to succeed. On his part, Kefi local government chairman Mohammed Babashew thanked the state government for executing projects that are benefiting the grassroots. Here I want to also appreciate the effort of uh, His Excellency Engineer Abdullahi Alaji Sule and the government of Nasarawa State. During the tour, it was observed that projects are at different levels of execution. The Acting Corps Marshal, Federal Road Safety Corps, Dauda Bu, has directed the immediate deployment of 10 additional operational vehicles to tackle traffic gridlocks in FCT. This is contained in a statement in Abuja on Monday by B.C. Kazim, the core public education officer. Bio explained that the deployment became necessary to ensure ease of movement along the route. He said that the deployment was in view of the envisioned increase in vehicular movement into and out of the federal capital territory. According to him, the vehicles are to be deployed to complement existing operational equipment in major gateways into the FCT. A motorist plying Lokoja Ajakuta Road that links part of the eastern flank of the state were stranded at Ganaja Road on Monday as flood water from River Niger Benue flooded the road and made it impassable. Three articulated vehicles that made an attempt to cross over it got stuck on the highway, making others park on the road and causing a long queue. Passengers were seen groaning over the sad and unexpected development as there was no end in sight for them to continue their journeys. Some drivers out of the desperation des decided to return to Ajaokuta to negotiate via Okene route to Lokoja. Malem Idris Usman, a motorist who claimed to be plying Ayangba Lokoja every day, said that he had to offload his passengers at the Ganaja Lokoja village and turn back as it became impossible for them to pass through the surging flood water on the said highway. The Nigerian Emergency Management Agency has predicted flooding in 27 states including the FCT. Motorists around Jabi Motor Park in the FCT have expressed concern over flooding that has submerged the roads. Usman Bello visited Jabi and passing this report. This is Jabi Moto Park, one of the major interstate travel parks in Nigeria's FCT. This very busy road that connects Jabi to Utaku Market and Uye in Abuja has become a major worry for road users during the rainy season. Motorists say this road at the entrance of the park face annual flooding. But this year has worsened as a result of the illegal structures were demolished, which as a result blocked the waterways. So we are here since this road, as it is every day, now so it be every year when the rain started falling. 
So for this year, because of this demolition that happened here, all the drainage that we are this year, you don't block, every year don't block. This place is spoiling our tire. And for a person like me, my tire is bought like two for that route. The road has become a public nuisance for commuters and those in the transport business say they have incurred heavy financial losses. This water has constituted has been constituted constituting a menace, disturbing my activities, loading and offloading activities for the past two years. As we are seeing, it is not the excess damper that constitutes this water. We were told from the Liquid Waste Department of Abuja Environmental Board that there's a structural defect from a sewer line that connected the Jabi axis to Utako axis. Authorities have said this year's flooding is one of the worst in over a decade. Lives and properties have been lost with thousands displaced in some parts of the country. Osman Bello, Trust TV News, Abuja. Kogi state government has banned dumping of refuse in unauthorized places across the 21 local government areas of the state. The government said anyone found guilty will be jailed for three months or made to pay a fine of 25,000 naira. The Kogi State Commissioner for Environment, Victor Omafai, disclosed this in a statement on Monday. He said that the new Kogi State Sanita Sanitation and Environmental Health Law of 2022, signed by Governor Yahya Bello of Kogi State recently, will be implemented with immediate effect. Omofae warned that the public want the public to desist from dumping waste on the road median, median and public drainages, open spaces or any unauthorized places besides the designated spots in the metropolis. The Nigerian Union of Teachers on Monday said it will continue to contribute the nations to the nation's building. The NUT president, Titus Amba, made this known during the 2022 World Teachers' Day press briefing held at the Federal Secretariat in Abuja. Amba thanked the regime of President Muhammadu Buhari for sustaining the president's Teachers and Schools Excellence Award. He noted that the award has helped to give hope to teachers and promote the dignity of the teaching profession. Now, abandonment, immobility, stigmatization, and poverty are the major challenges confronting people that sustain spinal cord injuries in Oshun State. This was disclosed during an awareness event organized by the Oshun State Chapter of the Spinal Cord Injuries Association of Nigeria, where emotion laden messages of hope resonated. Hamidou Egbadi files in this report as presented in our studio. One after the other, they were wheeled into the hall to participate in the awareness program organized by the Spinal Cord Injuries Association of Nigeria, Oshun State Chapter, to draw the attention of people to the plight of members with a view to seeking a way out. A neurosurgeon, Edward Komolafe of Obafemia Wolowo University Teaching Hospital, Ileife, in his presentation said, people that survive spinal cord injuries are lucky to be alive and urged their relatives and communities to provide the necessary support for them. One of the spinal cord injury survivors in the state, Christian Abiodun, said majority of the victims of spinal cord injuries were abandoned by their families while people in the community stigmatized them. The challenge is facing people with spinal cord injuries. Number one, most of our people are abandoned by the relatives and the people in the community. Though I really give glory to the name of, of the Lord. The Vice Chairman of Oshun State Chapter of the Spinal Cord Injuries Association of Nigeria, Olarewaju Olakusibe, said the essence of the awareness event is to seek necessary action to address the plight of the people living with spinal cord injuries. Uh, the essence of this day, the Spinal Cord Injuries Awareness Day, is to promote public awareness and also prompt individuals on issues concerning our plight. Dr. Anele Christopher, a neurosurgeon, charged people living with spinal cord injuries to keep hope alive. Many of them don't survive beyond one week after the injury. So we're always happy to see them thriving beyond several months and years 
of the injury, despite their uh, limitations. Meanwhile, findings revealed that majority of cases of spinal cord injuries were attributed to road crashes. An official of the Federal Road Safety Corps, Olumide Alabi, cautioned against actions that could cause road crashes to prevent injuries. Actions and inactions like uh, overspeeding, uh, what we know now, uh, uh, excessive speeding, you know, on the highway, overloading your vehicles, uh, the use of phone while driving, use of bad tires. The event had the theme, life after spinal cord injuries, the challenges, treatment and hope through research. You're watching the news on uh, Trust Television. We'll take a quick break and the news continues shortly. Documenting the Nigerian story. Welcome back. This is the News R and Trust Television. Now to some more stories. Monday's meeting of the Central Bank's Monetary Policy Committee is expected to arrive at a crucial decision on the Nigerian economy. The meeting is being held as inflationary pressure continues to push the financial stability of the nation and many are curious about the path it will take this time around, with many experts predicting that the MPC will most likely move for a hike in the benchmark interest rate. But is this the best decision to take as Nigeria's economy continues to struggle? Trust TV's Chamung Dabeng tells us more. The most recent figures released by the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS, show that Nigeria's inflation has moved from 19.64% in July 2022 to 20.52% in August 2022. Nigeria's inflation has been on a steady rise, and in order to quell inflationary pressures, the MPC made the decision to increase the MPR from 11.5% to 13, and finally 14% where it sits. As inflation continues to pose a problem to the nation, many are caught in between what direction to go, to increase or not to increase. Well, if we look at, uh, if we take a cue from what has happened in America, they might increase. If we take a cue from what has happened in, in uh, Turkey, they might reduce. But whatever way it is, we are in a very, we are between the rock and the hard place. If they reduce, uh, it will have consequences. If they increase, it will have consequences. If they reduce, investors might income. If they increase, the cost of uh, lending will become too high. The road seems to point towards a hike. Considering the current economic realities of Nigeria, what happens if the MPR increases and what will be the effects on the average Nigerian? Leave it where it is and then put more effort on the RUT 200. Okay. Because the RUT 200, you know, uh, program that is supposed to be helping them to bring in foreign exchange. Because if the government insists that what we have is a, a revenue problem, let them put all their efforts into making certain that we can start exporting and then repatriating forex. As long as we can show our forex, you know, uh, 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 situation, if we improve it, it's going to be helping every other thing. We're, we're, we're not in a very healthy place now. And you see, the moment you make, remembering that we don't have a lot of big, big borrowers, okay, you have the middle, 
income people, you know, struggling businessmen who are actually now competing with their sources of raw materials. So when you go to now make uh, borrowing expensive and they are going to be competing from people who are coming from China to bring in raw materials that they bring in as finished products, it's going to be a little tougher. So decreasing or reducing would have been a best bet for me. But like I said, the middle road is stay where they are and then focus on how we can be able to increase, show up our forex, uh, you know, uh, situation. The World Bank has warned developing nations against another rate hike as a response to inflationary pressures as it may trigger a recession. Chamun Dabeng, Trust TV News, Abuja. And now away from Nigeria, a gunman has opened fire in a school in central Russia, killing 15 people and wounding 24 others before shooting himself dead, authorities said. The shooting took place on Monday in a school number 88 in Izhevsk uh, city, 960 kilometers east of Moscow in the Udmusha region. Russia's investigative committee identified the gunman as 34-year-old Archim Kazastev, a graduate of the same school, and said that he was wearing a black T-shirt bearing Nazi symbols. No details about his motives have been released yet. The committee said that 11 children were killed in the school and that the shooting and 24 other people, including 22 children, were wounded in the attack. The governor of Udmurtia, Alexander Brechalov, said that the gunman, who he said was registered as a patient at a psychiatric facility, killed himself after the attack. Now, for more on sports updates, let's now take a look at this package put together by Adini Adishafe. The Nigerian Big Soccer League, NBSL organizers have announced the date for the suspended League Super 4 to determine the league winner after the final round of 2022 Nigerian Big Soccer League season, scheduled for June in Kaduna, was postponed. League coordinator Mahmoud Adejia, in a statement on Sunday, said following deliberations and consultations, the board of the Nigerian Big Soccer Association has fixed October 7th to 9th, 2022, as a tentative date for the NBSL Super 4 finals. The statement advised qualified teams to commence preparations, while further details about the venue, including accommodation, shall be communicated as soon as possible. Qualified teams for the Super 4 are Badagri Warriors B Soccer, Kada B Soccer, Kebi B Soccer, and Smart City B Soccer. Kebi B Soccer Club are the current holders of the title. And in volleyball, of our volleyball club and Nigerian Custom Service in Man Champions of 2022 Nigerian Volleyball Premier League in the men and women category on Sunday. Of our volleyball club beat Nigerian Crocodile Service 3 2 in a Kine contested match, while Nigerian Custom Service beat Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps in three straight sets in their match on the final day of the league played at the Indoor Sports Hall for Indo State Sports Council in Akure. NSC DC finished second position and Nigerian Custom Service placed third in the men's category. Why NSC? And that's a wrap on the news hour. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also watch us live on YouTube. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.